All right, how much land is an acre actually? Well, there's a very literal answer to that, which is 43,560 square feet, which no one uses almost ever to actually visualize or feel out a property. And feel is a very important word. So maybe you're thinking about buying a home on an acre or buying an acre and putting a home on it or five or 10 acres. But acreage and lot square footage is a lot like house square footage. You've probably been in a 2000 square foot home that felt really small. And you've probably been in a 2000 square foot home that felt really spacious. It's all relative, but layout and orientation really matters when it comes to size of a home or size of a lot. And that is maybe never more true than with an acre. I have stood on one acre lots that did not feel very big at all. And I've stood on acre lots that if you didn't know better, you might guess was three or four acres. Here's what matters most. How are you intending to use this property? If you're out in rural America and you want one acre to grow a crop on, it almost doesn't matter because it's probably a generally flat acre, whether it's wide and shallow or really long and skinny or round or it almost doesn't matter as much. If you're gonna irrigate it with round irrigation, you'd want it to be round. If you're gonna live on it, you probably want not so much road frontage and more land to play and use privately in the back. If you're using it for commercial reasons, you might want as much frontage as you can get. So the different use is gonna dictate what you might like or not like. If you think about an acre, it's generally speaking, give or take about a football field, about a football field, worth of land. So you can think, you know, how wide is that? How long is that? 100 yards long by, you know, 40, 50 yards wide, depending on how you're laying it out. And the only reason I give you a range there is because it depends on if you're measuring to what you could build on or where you could put a fence and where you live, depending on the perimeter or the building line or some of those restrictions. But the big point I want to make here is if you're looking for an acre, you should be looking for about an acre because three quarters of an acre might be more functional than a different property that's an acre or an acre and a half might be less functional. I would give yourself some wiggle room and I coach people, our, our real estate clients and other agents the same way on square footage in a house. If you're saying I'd like to have a big giant backyard, then about an acre is probably right. Maybe it's a really well laid out three quarters of an acre, or maybe it's a poorly laid out, but still really acceptable acre and a half, or maybe even two acres. I happen to own a property that people think is way bigger than it really is because it's a standard width and it's unusually deep. And whatever that does in people's brains, they tend to think it's two or three times as big as it actually is. That's not a bad thing for when you may go to resell a property someday. If people are like, wow, I've only got to buy three acres, but it looked like nine or 10 to me. That's a good thing for value. You might think twice about a property that's an acre and a half, but only feels like an acre. You're still gonna get what you get, but it may be harder to sell someday or harder to value or to borrow against because of the value that somebody might put on it. But the other thing that really determines how much value you get out of an acre, if you're gonna live on it, is where your house sits on that acre. If you're on a busy road and the house sits really far back, the value is it's far back. It's off the road, it's quieter, it's more private. That front yard, which is the bulk of your lot now, is less valuable to most people and less usable to most people. You're gonna to wanna to think about that. Again, if you're out in a rural area, it doesn't quite matter as much as long as you have the right amount of access to your property. But if your house is dead center, then you have two or four, depending on side yards, front and back, four smaller spaces. If your house is in the very front or the very back or on the very side, then you tend to have one really large space. Depends on how you're gonna use it or how you're gonna market it. But all those things will change what an acre actually means to you, how valuable it is to you and how much you can use it. I like the idea if you want a big backyard, which most of the time the people that want one acre are probably not farming or ranching it. They want privacy, space, room to roam, room to play, room to build, room to put in a pool, that kind of thing, gardens, orchards. I would encourage you to seek out about an acre or an acre or more, but be flexible if you landed on eight tenths of an acre or three acres. Obviously price and budget and things like that are gonna determine what you're willing to do, but I would not be so rigid that one acre is the right number. You may be looking in a development or a neighborhood that only has one acre lots, and I would be very careful how that lot is laid out, what the dimensions are, where the house might sit, where the driveways or septic tank or sewage or whatever easements might be that where those lay out. Not all acres are the same. They're the same amount of square footage, or that they're not the same functionality, utility, value. What other questions do you have about an acre or a home on land? Drop it in the comments, we will answer them there, or maybe we'll point you toward another video on our channel, or maybe we'll shoot another video for you. If you're ready to talk, 
about buying or selling or investing in homes on land or acreage property in the Dallas Fort Worth area. My information is below. I'm a real estate broker. We have a team that specializes in this and we can even connect you with people outside of the DFW area if that's what you want to do. Reach out to us, comment below. We'll talk to you soon.